Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to talk about in this video is static IP addresses for your infrastructure devices and why we use them. So if you're not familiar with what a static IP address is, a static IP address is an IP address that is manually configured on a device, or you can also do static reservations in DHCP. I prefer putting the actual IP address on the device because if your DHCP server fails, well, then all hell can break loose, right? So static versus where we're getting um, an IP address from our DHCP server. So devices, uh, routers, firewalls, switches, access points, um, and other infrastructure devices, in my opinion, my design, and in a lot of the other network design world, these devices should have static IPs. And it's going to allow reliable connection and communication. So anything that's providing a critical service, whether it's a gateway service, whether it is uh, DNS, DHCP, you know, there's a joke, it's always DNS, right? Well, if your DNS server's IP address changes and your computer <laughs> is set to use that old IP, yeah, you're going to have you're gonna have a bad day, right? So any of those, those services, those infrastructure services that allow the communications to happen, those should all be static. Could you imagine if your default gateway, if the IP address on it just kept changing and you could never, could never hit it or even the gateway to another network, it'd be kind of, Kind of crazy, right? So you want to make sure all those IPs are locked in and they don't change. The other thing that it does is it makes troubleshooting a lot easier um, because you're going to know the IP. You can go to the device. Um, if you are using monitoring software, you're going to be able to plug in those those IP addresses. Um, for some things, we do use qu uh, fully qualified domain names, but a lot of times when we're monitoring the infrastructure, we're going to use IPs. Plus, if you are using network access protection or network access control. So to do radius controlled VLANs or radius controlled network access, 802.1x, all those things, those endpoints, all the endpoints have to have static IPs to talk back to the NAP or the NAC server. Um, and the other thing that, that you really need to keep in mind is you can come up with a system. This is especially true if you are a consultant or you're helping people. If you have a static system set up, so let's say that uh, dot one is always your gateway. I've seen some goofy things like a, a gateway dot 100 in the middle of a slash 24. I've seen like, you know, we usually use dot one or dot 254 if we're on a slash 24, which is a 255, 255, 255, subnet mask. So you get 254 usable addresses. So we either use one or 254, but I, I've, we've seen everything, you know, on that. But uh, so let's say your gateway is dot one, then you know your switches. If you've got two switches, they're going to be dot two, dot three. Now your access points are dot four, dot five, dot six. Then maybe your servers start at 10, right? So those infrastructure devices were from, you know, one to nine. 10 is your server, whether it's a Sonali. Synology, whether it's a Windows server, whether it's a Linux box, and then maybe uh, 15 starts your printers, right? You can develop these kinds of standards that make it very easy for you to be able to very quickly identify devices and troubleshoot. So if you've got any questions about this, you're never going to sway me away from this. I don't care how cool people think Unify is. You know, we just did a Unify uh, setup for... Uh, uh, an MSP that we help in in New York, and every everything is static. We do phones. The PBX is static. That's an infrastructure device, right? It's static because it should never change, and we don't want to risk it changing. So, like I said, you'll never sway me. This is one of those things. Like I'll listen and I'll consider, but like I am always until I'm no longer able to do this anymore, I will always use static IPs for infrastructure devices. But, you know, down in the comments, let me know what you think about this, because I do want to hear if people have persuasive arguments about why you wouldn't use static IPs. I'm always looking for that juxtaposing position, right? So leave that down in the comments. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. 
Please subscribe, please comment, share, please follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with our Patreon link, our Amazon affiliate link, if you'd like to support the channel. Thank you very much for that. And if you need IT consulting, um, you want to redesign your network, or you want to implement VoIP, or have a security audit, all those things, reach out at willyhow.com. We do more than that as well. Click hire us, contact, or contact us. Fill that information out and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If we can't help you with what you're looking for, we do have a network of partners and we would be more than happy to get you to someone who can help you. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.